J.K. Rowling gets labeled as transphobic by the woke left. I'm Marco Perry. Welcome to the Perry Platform. J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter and a known progressive, is in hot water right now. For what, you might ask? Well, the answer really is quite silly. J.K. Rowling went on Twitter and said that trans people should be free to live as they wish, but a lady should not be fired for thinking that biology does determine sex and that sex is real and not purely subjective. Apparently, that qualifies you as being radical these days. You can see how far the goalposts have shifted. So, CNN writes that the drama started when Rowling sided with a controversial British researcher. So, here's another question. Why is this researcher controversial? It's because she thinks that biology defines gender. Now, the researcher's name is Maya Forrester, and it's important to go into her story first before we touch on Rowling. So, Maya worked for the Center of Global Development and CGD Europe. She allegedly lost her job following comments criticizing the UK government's plan to allow people to self-identify their gender. Maya is the kind of person who believes that simply saying you are a man or a woman does not make it so. You need a certain level of biological criteria to make it true. It's not simply just you making a decision about yourself. She wrote in a private message to a coworker that, here's the quote, I don't think people should be compelled to play along with literal delusions like trans women are women. And this private message was used as evidence against her in her termination case. And that just goes to show too that nothing online is truly private. Your coworker might screenshot it and send it against you, or your company might be able to pull up the records and look into the database to find any emails that you sent back and forth with your colleagues. So be careful because it can lead you into hot water even if you aren't necessarily in the wrong, like I think is the case with Maya. So Maya takes this to a tribunal the fact that she is being removed due to supposedly voicing her opinion on these trans issues, and she makes the claim that she should not be removed simply due to this. Now, the judge in the tribunal comes forward, and he says some very shocking things. The judge stated that Maya's view is not worthy of respect in a democratic society. Wow, the hypocrisy of that. That really took me back a little bit. The judge is literally borderline mental. Living in a democratic society means being allowed to have opinions that differ from other people. Of course, there are gradations here, and some opinions truly are heinous, but let's review what Maya thinks. She believes in the scientific approach when it comes to gender, that there is a problem when a country allows its populace to create their gender identity for themselves. You can like what you like, do what you want to do, but when you require other people to buy into your subjective worldview, then it becomes a problem. The reality is that nobody has thoroughly fleshed out the issue either. Whenever topics like this come up, the radicals are quick to label any opposition as hate, and they try to deplatform you as we're seeing here with Maya. Being a biological man or woman goes beyond simply societal norms, which is commonly referenced as a reason for trying to switch genders. Somebody may think that the typical gender role of a woman is appealing to them. They may like having long hair, they may like playing with dolls, or they may like wearing a dress, but this does not mean that you are a woman because you like these things. It just means that you like those things, and those are typically what is commonly associated with the other gender. It's far more nuanced than simply making that connection, but people don't want to admit it. It's funny too, because simply boiling down what it means to be a woman to things like that, to the clothes they wear or the toys they play with, I feel is disrespectful to women in general. There's something deeper at its root than the things that they like to do or things that are prescribed upon them. The same goes for men as well. If someone gets their hair cut really short, I'm not going to automatically assume that they are a man now because of that. At the same time, I'm not going to hate them, and that is very important and a key distinction to make here. People who subscribe to trans thinking should not be harassed, but there is a difference to be understood. There is a difference between hate and questioning the principles being perpetuated by the mass media. It's not the same thing. This woman here, the researcher, was not calling for violence or anything of the sort. Maya was just speaking from a logical viewpoint. How is this not worthy of respect in a democracy? That's what the judge said. What's truly not respectable is removing someone from their job over simply thinking that biological men are not women and vice versa. That is totalitarianism, the opposite of a democracy, and that's what the judge is perpetuating. The judge is a moron 
And I'd actually wager that the same can be said about the organization, the research institute that she was removed from. What an amazing organization. They respond to critical opposition towards polarized subjects by simply ridding themselves of the issue. That's not what academia is about. If she's wrong, let's hear it. What's the rationale for that? What's the argument against her stance? All that's happening is people are putting out blanket accusations of hate and intolerance. How ironic is that? Now, JK Rowling enters the picture and she gives a very reasonable take on the situation. One that I think is highly appropriate and I agree with. She put out a tweet that nobody should have any issue with, but of course, the far left is going to lose their mind over someone being logical. Rowling says, Dress however you please. Call yourself whatever you like. Sleep with any consenting adult who will have you. Live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real? Hashtag I stand with Maya. Everything here is correct. Everything there is totally acceptable, even if you disagree with it. It's a rational tweet. Trans people deserve, like everyone, an underlying level of respect. That's a basic fact here. Nobody in this equation is calling for attacks, harassment, or violence. It's live and let live. They are free to call themselves and identify whatever which way they want to. The issue, though, is forcing other people to buy into that subjectivity. There are valid arguments against the popular trans notions, and they don't inherently possess hatefulness. They're simply criticizing the ideas behind them. What Rowling says should unite everybody. Let people live their lives and don't try to destroy those who disagree with you. Be civilized, but nope. Welcome to 2019, where saying that is no longer acceptable. Saying something like that labels you as a radical. We live in a world where a left-leaning celebrity, Rowling, is being touted as evil and intolerant. Rowling is no far-right activist. She's a progressive, but because she won't bow to the far left, they will come after her and try to force her and club her into subjugation. If a regular leftist stance like what Rowling is putting out is not good enough anymore, and the standard is radical or a bust, I worry for where we are heading. CNN then writes an idiotic article trying to explain how Rowling was incorrect for that tweet, and let's go through that. One quote that they use is, As a gay man that found safety in Hogwarts, knowing that trans people would not be able to find that safety breaks my heart. What? Rowling is not condemning trans people or trying to banish them from Hogwarts. That misses the mark entirely. She is standing up against totalitarian consequences for thinking sex is a real thing and not entirely subjective. I am sure Hogwarts is still quite the safe place for LGBTQ people. CNN goes on to write comments like, Rowling's create a ripple effect. They provide a springboard to reinvigorate and perpetuate hate. It's as I said, if you don't bow entirely to the dogmas of the far left, you are perpetuating hate. That's simply how they see it, and they're going to call you on that no matter the circumstance. What a convenient rationale to shut down opposition. You don't even have to defend your ideas anymore. Just call them hateful, and that's good enough. Let's hear why JK is wrong. She clearly is not. What she says is 100% correct, and CNN has no firepower against that. That's why they take the coward route and move away from the article at hand and slander using secondary mechanisms. It's a logical fallacy. And here's another gem from CNN. They call Rowling and Maya TERFs, and that stands for a trans-exclusionary radical feminist. They say that people like this believe that only some women deserve rights and others don't. Well, really, no, they don't think that. Someone like Maya wouldn't even regard a trans woman, in other words, a biological man, as a woman in the first place. They believe in rights for all women, but they define that scientifically. CNN is trying to bend the rhetoric to point them and paint them in a certain light. CNN then goes on to try and point out to us what the issue is with giving someone a gender identity at birth. They say that, well, what typically happens is people look at the baby's genitals, and simply based on that, you get assigned a gender, and you have to live the rest of your life out as that. What they fail to understand, though, is that genitals are only a fraction of what's different. That's not the only difference between a man and a woman. If you take me, put me beside a woman, the only difference would not just be our genitals. There's a lot that goes into that equation. It's actually quite complex, so there are genetic traits that vary. One of those is the genitals, but that's not it. There are also physical occurrences and things that are more common in men than in women. Even something as simple as the bone structure that you have. 
Then, there are psychological differences that are documented, and behavioral traits that are more common in one gender than the other, and the list goes on and on. That's not just the defining criteria is your genitals. <laughs> That's a simple-minded way to go about thinking about this. If gender was simply a matter of choice, as they seem to imply, then why do we need hormone supplements when we try to convert? That counteracts their argument entirely. It's not just subjective. There is something there at the biological level that you are trying to correct for when you make a switch. To not be able to identify that and realize the reality, well, doesn't do too well with that argument. Then, they try to conflate this entire thing with societal norms like how gender roles define clothing and certain behaviors, and that's true. But, here's a newsflash. Two things can be true at once. The gender roles that we enact are not fixed. Somebody said, give this little boy a toy truck and give that woman a doll. These are not things that are inherent in our biology, but the sex you are born with is not the same as these gender roles. You can be a man, a biological man who likes dresses. You can also be a man who likes long hair or whatever you pick. Things that are commonly associated with the opposite gender, and it's true for women too. You can be a woman who likes short hair, who likes to wear pants, whatever, whatever it is that you want to do. Just because you like that dress or you like that hair or you like that way of acting, you like that societal norm for the opposite gender, it does not make you that gender. These, these two things are not logically coherent. At this level of analysis, you are simply a man who likes the dress or you are a woman who likes the short hair or whatever. I think you should be free to do that and I will fight for that. Do whatever you want, live your best life, but I don't want anyone hating on you for it as well. Do what you want to do and everybody should respect that, but the reality here is that we need to be able to freely discuss these actions and these behaviors because there is an underlying ideology. Then the article comes and continues to pick up steam even more. In criminalizing and condemning people's identity, we create an environment where you are pressured to conform or else you suffer the consequences. CNN wrote this and it's actually mind-boggling to me. How do they not detect the irony of this? I'm, I'm simply taken aback by it. Let's try and break this down. First of all, nobody is talking about criminalizing anything. They are pulling these notions out of their imagination. Rowling is not saying to lock them up. She's not going out there trying to pass laws that will put trans people in jail or make it illegal to bypass gender rules, which is not the same as changing your gender itself. That's not what's happening here, and it's an odd conflation for them to think that's really the goal of these two people. They're actually just projecting radical rationale from the right onto these two women, which is interesting to me because they can't even seem to differentiate what is radical and what's not. That's a problem. If someone were to say, okay, yeah, let's lock up trans people, obviously everyone should be against that. That's not the case being made here. And here's the second point they make. They say that supposedly, things like Rowling's tweets create an environment where you either conform or you face consequences. Oh really? Like, exactly what happened to the researcher Maya? She did not conform and she got removed for it. Rowling did not conform and she's getting shamed into submission because of the environment that CNN has played a part in creating. They are guilty of the charges they are trying to project onto other people. This is journalism? This is just spewing ideological rhetoric. I don't even know how you can write these things and not think that you are culpable in creating the exact same environment in today's world. To be that disjointed with reality is insane. Then we have the cherry on top at the end. LGBTQ people may have to find another fantasy series to love. Well, I have a couple recommendations. The Witcher is pretty good, but maybe their claim is wrong. Maybe you don't have to find another series. You can still love Harry Potter. Rowling wasn't being as extreme as CNN seems to believe. That tweet was perfectly fine and you can actually say that she is advocating for trans people. She's telling people to let them do their thing but at the same time not to be trying to fire women for saying that sex is a real thing. Do we live in two separate worlds here? It certainly feels that way. The far left is trying to become mainstream and there are people who try to push back against that and they are demonized. Nobody can agree on anything and the essence of truth in our society has evaporated. What's real here? Subjectivity in everything cannot be the answer as it's untenable. If everything was subjective, then arguing about this would be akin to fighting over which flavor yogurt is the best or what color sofa that you like. When people are having their livelihoods destroyed over thinking that biology trumps subjectivity, 
we have a problem, but CNN never wants to talk about that. Even if you disagree with this stance here about biology versus subjectivity, to call for deplatforming and the destruction of other people is totally inappropriate. It cuts against what democracies truly stand for, not what that judge thinks it does. Freedom, debates, and truth-seeking. That's what we should be striving for, but we're doing the opposite now. We're moving towards deplatforming, zero tolerance policies, and destroying anybody who thinks differently than you. That is a path to disaster for any Western country, and to allow the far left to seep into the mainstream is a horrible mistake that we will reap the detriments of in the near future. So, that brings me to the end of today's conversation. If you enjoy the content, be sure to leave a review and share. I think it's an important message in this episode, so I do encourage you to actually share, and it'll help our channel and content grow. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as well, at Perry Platform. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you soon.